world war. And it's not about this capital of bullets. It's about who controls the information. What they see and hear, how we work, what we think. It's all about the information. You want a war? You got a war. That's right, we got an army you can see and an army you don't know nothing about. This is Covert Radio and this is Fearlessly Unapologetic Talk Radio. You know, I got, I got to be honest with you guys here that um, I'm I'm officially throwing my ring, uh, my hat in the ring here against this entity on the screen. And, I, you know, I never really, um, I never really thought that, uh, I never thought it was this bad, put it that way. But it's unbelievable uh, what I've uncovered really the last two days, three days, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and deeper and worse and deeper. And I'm just like, this guy's a monster. There's no other word. You know, the title of this video, even though I don't have it 100%, but I know it's going to be something like this. You know, what are you going to receive first, Tariq Nasheed? What are you going to receive first? Are you going to get your reparations? Or are you going to get an IRS audit? Potentially for fraud, fund misappropriation, non-disclosure, non-transparency. I mean, there's so many... You know, there's so many laws that a 501c3 um, is required to... um, to abide by uh, and I think I, I have a feeling that the gravy train is about to end but see here's the thing and I don't know if you guys know this again this is covert radio uh, this is talk radio format and this is fearlessly unapologetic talk radio um I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but do you know what megalomania is or a megalomaniac? (laughs) You're looking at him on the screen. My opinion, you're looking at him. It's this crazy hunger for power, for wealth. And, you know, there's one distinctive characteristics uh, or characteristic of somebody who is a megalomaniac. And they have a passion for grand schemes and scams. They also have a de, uh, delusional belief that they're important or they're powerful uh, or famous. And the worst, I mean, this is absolutely a mental disorder. The worst thing that can happen to them is if they have a whiff of, of infamy or a whiff of power, or a whiff of uh, being famous, or important, like going on, uh, you know, nationally uh, televised 
<laughs> talk shows, no matter how badly you're clowned and embarrassed and how, you know, ignorantly you don't even realize that's the exact reason why you were asked to be on Fox News with Tucker Carlson. You were called out. And that's not the only thing. I mean, Tariq Nasheed's been on many things over the years. 20 years ago, uh, you know, the guy's 50-some years old, 40, 50-some years old. I mean, but what I found out is the, the depth of what he's doing is unreal. And I think he has spun so far out of control and or he's gotten away with it for so long, and or he is an agent. He's been called an agent in this video. Maybe it's not this video, but this is the um, Tariq Nasheed video at the California reparations hearing. And this showed up in my feed and a couple few days ago, and I'm just like, oh, okay. What are we playing dress up? I mean, there was another video of him in this suit jacket, and it's like a 4X or something. <laughs> I mean, I know he's he's a big dude, but, like, this jacket is clownish on him. This 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 camera angle here does, does no justice. I mean, he literally looks like he's playing dress-up with daddy's coat. Uh, he, he walked around strutting and, you know, with his hands in his pockets, and it's just... The delusion of power and importance is almost comical. And you're going to see how well he's he's been received at this uh, reparations hearing in Oakland. Uh, I think maybe out of a crowd of several hundred people, five recognize him and clap for him when he uh, starts his little speech here for two minutes. I I can't get over the things that I've discovered, and I don't want to put them in this video here. I am going to touch one or two things because I don't want to make it long. Um, th this video actually, hang on one second. This is hold on. Actually, let me hit play on this. I got to do something. One second. <laughs> let me hit play on this. Hold on. Oh, sir. Much respect to all the brothers and sisters here in the Bay Area. First of all. I want to make three quick points about reparations and then let our other brothers and sisters speak. First thing we have to understand, we have to focus and keep the emphasis on it being lineage based. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I'm back. All right. Um, so you here, well, you know, there, again, there's several hundred people here and listen to his reception. Oh, sir. Much respect to all the brothers and sisters here in the Bay Area, first of all. I mean, was that four people, five people maybe? Um, I think people are starting to wake up to who this this charlatan is. And I and, and this is again my opinion, but I've I've deterred I only found Tariq Nasheed because of Tommy Sotomayor. And once I did find Tariq Nasheed several years ago, I did realize, oh shit, Tommy has based his entire persona, scammy persona, con man persona, he has based it all on uh, this guy here, Tariq Nasheed. Tariq uh, wrote the book that Tommy follows. Tariq wrote the playbook that Tommy follows, except Tommy cannot... Uh, can't get right you know what I mean he he just can't get right and he started off very 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 similar on a trajectory that Tariq Nasheed did the difference is once Tariq Nasheed recognized oh shit this dude's doing what I'm doing he's 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 uh you know how would how would how would K Flex say it let's see here uh, he's uh, he's hip to the game or so whatever pimp slang. He's a pimp, you know. That's the, uh, and there are so many disorders here, like personality disorders, disassociative uh, disorders. Like he's a pimp. He's a rapper. He's a businessman. He's a uh, museum curator. He's a civil rights leader. 
Uh, let's see here. What else? He is a uh, <laughs> a dancer, a R and B singer. He's a um, an author. He is a playwright. He is a. I mean, it's just on and 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 on. And I'll tell you something. The only thing, the only reason, like if we would take race out of the equation. Tariq Nasheed would be working at Walmart or he'd be sending his wife to go work at Walmart. Let me say that again. If race was taking, taken out of the equation, if Tariq Nasheed could not be a race baiter or an agent, uh, then he would be working at Walmart because he has nothing else. That's, that's all he really has. It's all based around race. Uh, other than that, he's a hobbyist of whatever, all these other delusions, these megalomania uh, delusions of power and importance and fame. And like, you know, he, he's, uh, he, he's a hero. He's the uh, savior. He's the civil rights. But the, the vast majority of black people who have any level of intelligence cannot stand him. They can't stand him because they see directly through what he's doing. And that's why when Tommy started doing what Tariq was doing, Tariq immediately had to had to resort to ad hominem attacks, which is what black people love as a whole um, from my experience. And Tommy, again, uses that method. You could bring 37 bone crushing factual <laughs> factual uh, receipt-based facts and talking points and play Tommy himself his own words. And he will find a way to take those 37 points and when his when he first speaks back in, in, in a rebuttal, it'll be an ad hominem attack. He'll make fun of your accent. He'll make fun of something you said. He'll totally skirt around everything and, and go straight for you know, a, uh, some sort of an ad hominem. And, and that's exactly what Tariq Nasheed did to Tommy Sotomayor when he immediately created the crispy doll. So, you know, he couldn't, he could not allow Tommy any foothold because he's like, this guy's, you know, he's learned, he's watched me and now he's doing what I do. Nah, this is my money. These are my butter biscuits. And really in my next video, we're going to see what Dr. Uma Johnson what Dr. Johnson has to say, because now in Tariq Nasheed's megalomanio, uh, megalomaniac lust for gr his greedish lust for power and money, he's now stepping into the school, uh, you know, sphere that Dr. Johnson is trying to capitalize on. So, you know, Tariq want all them butter biscuits, cuz. Man, the gloves is off, cuz he want all them butter biscuit off of his said. You know, <laughs> eh, the, uh, man, I, you know, again, it's just mind blowing. Again, I don't want to talk too, too much about uh, what I want to get into in the next video. But he definitely, definitely, definitely wants all the butter biscuits for himself. The gloves are off. And in my opinion, Tariq Nasheed is nothing but a high level drug dealer. Oh, now, before you call your Beverly Hill accountants and attorneys, Tariq, or your government attorneys, Tariq, uh, bef before you do that, um, I'm making a comparison a high-level drug dealer, except the drug is called hopium, H-O-P-I-U-M. And you sell that to low IQ dum-dums. You sell that to low IQ dum-dums or people that are privy to the game. So, and I, what I mean by that is there's around, you know, recent census, uh, numbers say there's about 50 million black people in America. Okay. 
So out of those 50 million black people in America, how many are catapulted by the power structure, the Zionist and the communist? How many of them are catapulted to the higher echelons as influencers for the 50 million? How many do you think that is? Uh, We'll say Tariq Nashit is one of them, okay? We'll say he's one of them. We'll say Dr. Johnson is two of them. We'll say that uh, Charlemagne the God, which was a white guy, uh, Charlemagne the God is the third one. So how many more are there? How many, let's, and I'm counting everyone that's alive today. Civil rights leaders, community leaders, um, you know, people who uh, can can control, we'll say, who can control the pockets of, the minds of, the 50 million. How many Tariq Nashits are there? How many do you think? A hundred? Um, a thousand? I don't I personally don't think the number is much higher than a thousand. Do you understand where I'm going with this now? Why is Tariq Nasheed allowed to operate again with such high levels of obvious fraud? In my opinion. And it is going to come out when he's audited. And he absolutely will be audited this upcoming year. This year, within the next 12 months. Within the te- next 12 months. I've already made a request with his uh, his financial people or his accountants, whoever they are. I have their address in Beverly Hills. I want all of the financial information from the last three years. I want 2020, 2021, and 2022. All of the IRS 990 forms. I want a copy of them. I've already made the request. I'm expecting them in return. Because, see, this is where the level of the rabbit hole started for me. And I cannot wait till the next video because there's something about Tariq Nasheed that he has a system of his, I guess I would simply just call it his hustle. He has a, he has a playbook that he does and he quickly replicates it each time, which with each new hustle. But here's the problem. He is at a level now where there is there's no recourse. Even if he even if he didn't if he had a connection uh, somewhere in the government. I mean again, I don't know how high up of an agent he could be or what uh intelligence network he works for. But I will say this, you cannot ignore people clamoring together Uh, and requesting that the law be followed. That's simply it. By law, Tariq Nasheed will be audited in the next 12 months. Probably closer to the next mm, six months or so, four months. He absolutely, by law, will be audited. And it is because of the amount of money that he is now in control of. He alone is in control of with his nonprofit, his 501c3, which every single one of his scams, in my opinion, are filtered through his nonprofit. The Melanoid Nation Foundation. And I have a very strong suspicion because when I tried to find information, I could only get what I could get from the IRS, which is fine, but I will get what I want 2020, uh, 2021 and 2022, all three years of the uh, 990 forms. They will be given to me by his accounting firm 
And I truthfully believe there's zero transparency in what's happening here. Because I'm going to show you a couple things that I do have and that I did get. But I personally suspect that there's extremely fraudulent activity going on. Here's what triggered me first. This is the first thing when I realized, hmm, yeah. See, you know, this is uh, this is unlike Tariq's little pattern here. Again, Tariq has a system that he does with each new scam. Each new scam always has a website with it. And out of the 20 I could show you right now to back up this book, this fundraiser, uh, this charity, the Hidden History Museum, the, uh, the Ulu Steven thing, the fucking... American Maroon, now that's over $100,000 or close to it. Just on and on and on and on and on. And every new one he has, he creates his little website. And through the foundation, through his nonprofit, he's always claiming, from what I've been able to tell, anywhere from five to $10,000 a year just for websites. Five to ten thousand dollars a year just for websites. But if you look on the screen here, this is melanoidnation.org. This is the caddy that the that all the money gets filtered into the trunk. Melanoid Nation is Tariq Nasheed's Cadillac. Cadillac with gold rims. He got gold Dayton's on his Cadillac. That's the vehicle. The vehicle. The Cadillac had big trunks and they got tinted windows. You can't see shit. And you can't see how much money's in that fucking trunk, can you, Tariq? Oh, just mysteriously. All your fucking websites are up and running and there's a thousand pictures of you moist and uh, dressed up like you're some fucking celebrity at a museum. (laughs) I mean, your your one point two million dollar nightclub. Oh, I mean, your 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 museum. Yeah, the the uh, the Tariq Nasheed. You know, because uh, I'm not getting into this here. I, You know, we're going to revisit the video and the, uh, you know, the lot that he wants to buy on historic Crenshaw Boulevard. Uh, we are going to uncover the real, the hidden history, the black history. You know, and I covered this before in another video. I lie after lie, even in that promo video for the fundraiser, but he still got $1.2 million. And then within what, four or five months, he turned it into a nightclub. So you got your, uh, your, 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 uh, you know, your Walgreen eight by 10 prints of black and white, you know, pictures of old black people on the walls. You got your, uh, you know, your, your Costco trophy case, your armoire, with a couple shelves and your uh, what you, you I, I seen a uh, a lawn jockey and, and there was what else I think an anchomime a syrup bottle and and that's it that's a 1.2 million dollar hidden history museum that within a, a few months he turned literally into a fucking nightclub and I told you he was I told you he was gonna do this. If I could find the video I said that in, I said, what you're, all of you dumb dumbs giving Tariq Nasheed more money, all you're buying him is one to two, possibly three new videos, his mink slide videos. And I said, if, if this building ever does get built, I promise you there's going to be a stage inside of the building where he's going to have concerts. My exact fucking words. And that's exactly what he did. Now, how did I know that? Did you tell your donors that, Tariq Nasheed? 
Did you tell your donors that? Did you tell the 10 or 15,000 people that gave you over a million dollars? Did you tell them that's what their money ultimately is going to do? Deceitful, propagandic materials is what you've created. It's completely fraudulent and deceitful. And you've ripped off with zero transparency. I guarantee you zero transparency. You've ripped off every one of those people. Because you never fucking told them that your donations are going to go for a fucking nightclub with some black and white pictures in it and a lawn jockey in a trophy case from 1970. You never said that, right? That's deceit. Those are ill-gotten gains. That's fraud, right? You know, are you, you going to hurry up and send an email to 15,000 people and say, oh, if the IRS contacts you about the uh, money you gave me, y yes, I you better say that I did tell you I will be turning it into a nightclub within a few months. You going to do that? Good. You're Keep making a paper trail, dude. Keep making a paper trail. Because I'm for real. See, here's the thing, Tariq. Let me tell you something. I told you this a long time ago. I said, you don't want these glowing green eyes on you. You don't. You don't want that. And now I'm so sick and tired of what you're doing to poor black people that I'm, I'm done, dude. I'm done. So now I'm going to give you almost my full attention. And I'm starting here. I'm starting here. I just want to show you guys this. I got, I did get the 2020 990. This is public information. This is my right. Uh, Melanoid Nation Foundation is a 501c3, uh, federally exempt uh, organization. By law, this information is available to anybody that asks for it. By law, it's highly suggested by the IRS that all of this information is made transparent on their website and on their print materials. But you can go to 10 or 15 other websites where Tariq Nashit's asking you for more money, and you can go and read all these poetically written, five or written fucking paragraphs about two or 300 year old history to make you uh, angry. So you give him $5 out of your SSI check. And, uh, but you can't go here and see what he's actually doing with your money. He's telling you, like, let's see here. What's this one here? Yeah, there's the one for Ulu Stevens. That I think he's made uh, $20,000 on that. And I'm curious if this uh, Ulu Stevens ever even fucking got a penny of that. Uh, here's where's one of my favorites that I found. Let's see here. Let me take a look. Yeah, there's... There's the FBA reparations rally. This is all through PayPal. Oh, yeah, here's a good one. Here's here's GoFundMe. Can you guys see that? Here, let me blow that up a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Can, can you guys see that? Helping hands for Haiti. Here, Tariq Nashit's taking a page out of the Clintons playbook. Hmm interesting your donation will benefit melanoid nation foundation you're helping support helping hands for haiti and this is gofundme there you go that's one i don't know of how many because i got i, I got so sick and tired of coming across these and finding them i'm just like what how how is it how is this possible and i know how i know how he's been able to get away with it for since 2015 2015 is when the uh letters of of instatement came through i've gotten two copies of those so far uh so since 2015 by law 
uh, there's a, a, a paper trail of 990s, and that's what he has one of several he has to file every year. Here's 2020 right here. And I just want to go, I just want to show, this is before $1.2 million on just one of the fundraisers in 2021. Again, this is a year before that. So this, that amount, the 1.2 million is not even on the record yet. I don't, I don't, those are what I'm getting. I, I'll, they're in the mail. And I want you to look what, what he cleared and what he claimed in 2020. So let's see here. This is, mm, we're going to go down. See, this is hard for me to see because I'm, I'm far back from this monitor, but I know you guys can see it. So let's see here. Program service revenue the prior year, which would have been 2019, $300,027. Uh, it was $327,000, uh, 300, $327, 392. The current year for 2020, right here, $700,000, almost $800,000. Seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars, four hundred and seventy-five. So, twenty uh, nineteen, twenty twenty. He's already over a million dollars. This is a lot of this. Well, depending on the accounting, which it's all going to come out. Um, but he, the amount of money carried over into twenty twenty-one is going to push him far over the threshold of automatic audit. So, and if he's not audited. There, I'm, I'm following, uh, well, I'll, I'll cover that later. So you, and I'm, I'm going to link this in the description. You guys can take a look at it. Oh, by the way, too, one of the most reputable, uh, 501c3 nonprofit, um, charitable groups who they normally look at the top 150 charities in the United States, but they rank all of them. Tariq Nasheed's so he's the only listed, which is another problem because by law, there should be a board of directors. There's no, there, there's, there's no accountability. It is his vehicle. He is driving the vehicle. There is no executives listed. There is no board of directors. He alone is making all the decisions yet claiming he's paid nothing. Okay. So uh, let's see here. I mean, again, you guys can look at this. It's hard for me to see from way back here where I'm at. But we have assets, which is uh, 2019 was, um, let's see here, beginning of the current year. Uh, he brought into 2020 uh, 120000 in assets. And he's saying that by the end of 2020, that, um, really d over doubled to three hundred and seventeen thousand uh, dollars. He has no liabilities. The net assets fund balance is again three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. But let's go down through here. Okay, so this is where they start hiding the money. Uh, total program service expenses. So, so he has two hundred thousand dollars in expenses. Wow. Yeah, and we're, I, there's one line. I mean, again, you guys can look at this all you want. Uh, I read every line of this. Let's see here. I want to go down to the bottom. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no salaries are paid. You can see here, average hours per week, list any hours related to the organization, zero, zero. So he, you know, he's basically stating there's zero billable hours. He's the CEO. He's the only listed um, person of any compensation, but it's all zero. Estimated amount of compensation from the organization related to the or reportable compensation from, he's saying he makes nothing. Well, where do you work, Tariq? Where do you work? Uh, I, I work for my, for, 
I work for Melanoid Nation. That's my full, I'm, and I work every day tirelessly. I put tons, I mean, I put 900 million hours in a week. Uh, I just work tirelessly. Well, you don't, you don't get paid? No, all I, I, um, I've been fortunate uh, enough to, uh, you know, live off of my wife. Oh, good. That's, that's nice. Is that, is that what we're going with? So who's paying for the hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of music videos and, uh, you know, the vehicles, you have a Bentley, unless it's all fake. I mean, unless it's just, you know, you renting a car for again, more media again, to feed your megalomania, you know what I mean? So you're not getting paid anything. You don't work any, any hours. You have no compensation at all. So that means there's no W-2, no 1099. Tariq makes nothing. But he's in control of over a million dollars. And then it's probably closer to two, two and a half million for t- the end of 2021. Because just in one of the uh, the fundraising uh, projects, he again received $1.2 million for again, a few eight by tens that were printed at Walgreens. Yeah, I'm going to see. Here's the other thing that's beautiful. Math doesn't lie. So I want to show. Wait, what's this? Yeah, so. Okay, but I want to show you guys one one thing here. Oh, yeah. Here's some expenditures. $41,000 uh, paid by the nonprofit for travel. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, high-end hotels, a lot of uh, rented cars, a lot of what? Travel, vacations, hand out a business card, say it's a business trip. Yeah, we're going to see, aren't we? Office expenses. $44,000 in office expenses? Here's fun. fun. Uh, <laughs> you know, a hundred, half of it, half of the money is, is used for more media, more brainwashing, more propaganda, more websites, more cool, you know, little flyers and t-shirts and all this fucking merch that's just ridiculous. Uh, half of the entire donated budget you're saying is going for, for that? 150 some thousand dollars? You know, and, and here, 300 and some thousand goes to other. That's that's just other. You know, you, you pay the accountants 4,000. What else? Yeah. Let's see here. Cash on hand, end of the year, 200,000. Loans, total assets. Yeah. Anyway, I want to get down to here. Where are we at? Total revenue, $767,000. Total expenses, $549,000. So the net asset by the end of the year, what, what he has to play with is three hundred over $300,000. So, and, they, and then he's bringing that directly into 2021. Uh, and, and, and within the, you know, a few months, he, he's cashing out for $1.2 But right down here, again, you guys can look through all through this. Yeah. Public support, 90,000, whatever. Uh, I want to go down to here. It's, I know it's here somewhere. Let me look. Mm. Yeah, right here coming up. Um, let's see. Right here. See, again, math doesn't lie. Uh, List of other fees for services, expenses. Okay. I want you to to pay attention to something here. Auto, $3,000. Bank charges fees, about, what, $130. Contractors, $45,000 in contractors. Okay. You know, again, uh, any... (laughs) just there's so many ways to just fuck with these numbers and create a little LLC or have your wife sign off on this LLC and or do this with your cousin because he the one doing the janitorial at the, at the office but the office is your basement so there's write-offs there see here's the reality 
All of you dumb dumbs with your SSI checks or your hard earned money, you're paying for every aspect of Tariq Nasheed's life. You're paying for every inflated aspect of his family's life. You're paying for every vacation that he takes, every video that he delusionally inflates his ego with. You understand what we're doing here yet? And what are you getting from it? Oh, that's right. We now we we got us a we got us a museum now. Yeah, we did that, right? So fucking sad, man. I I I just it's so sad. It's so sad. Like you people that do this really honestly should have caretakers. Or you should have assigned payees who are controlling your money and not villains like Tariq Nasheed. But here's what I want you to look at right here. Oh, yeah. Charitable donations, $1,000 out of close to a million dollars that was handed to him through 10 to 15 different vehicles of Haiti, this, judges, that, you know, fucking racism, 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 race baiting, race baiting, money, 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 money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while he has white women twerking at the uh, the the real hidden history museum, where white women wear you know scantily clad white women twerk while there's you know DJs pumping fucking music and we have drinks and like get the fuck out of here. I, I just I I hope and pray, man. I, I just hope and pray. See, here's the thing about karma. It's coming. What do you think? You're going to fucking do this to all these people, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 people. You're just going to keep robbing, robbing, taking, robbing, robbing, squeezing, squeezing, taking, playing on their emotions, playing on their hate, playing on their low IQ, their low intelligence, their vitriol, their hate, their disgust, their frustration. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Get the fuck out of here. And karma's coming, dude. Karma is coming. And it has green eyes. Again, this is what I want you to look at right here. Because numbers don't lie. And this information will absolutely be verified by the government when they do their audit. Where is it? You can't hide this. Where is it at? Right here. Yeah. Look, printing expenses, $25,000 in printing expenses. Okay. That's a lot of black. Oh, no, that was for next year. Never mind. Hold on. Research? $700 in research. (laughs) Here we go. Here we go. Computer expenses, janitorial, $30,000 in job supplies. See, when you have Beverly Hills accountants uh, or or government agents uh, telling you, no, you save this receipt, save this receipt, save this receipt, make this receipt, make this receipt, save this receipt, get this receipt, make this receipt. Say you did this, write this out. Here's Here's a template for this. Sign off on that. Have your wife sign that. Have your cousin Ray Ray sign this. Hire him for that. Do this. Do this. Make this. Make that. And you have, you know, he'll be able to show a lot of uh, paperwork. Probably, I, you know, I, I, I hope that they would be, you know, a, a little thorough, because they also know there's an audit coming with the amount of money that's fallen in his lap in the last 400 uh, days you know, what, 800 days or so? Yeah, they know an audit's coming. But again, my eyes are deceiving me. I'm looking. I know it's in this section. Oh, here it is right here. PayPal fees. PayPal fees. What does that mean, Covert Radio? Well, let me tell you. This is what PayPal fees mean. PayPal fees is a cut See, I have a PayPal business account. They are a, uh, it's called a merchant account. Okay. So what that means is when I am out somewhere, I'm, I'm, I want to use my business account. 
or I'm doing business with my business account, I use PayPal as the merchant to process the debit and credit card payments. So when they do that, there's fees involved, okay? So I pay a certain amount of money to, for, to be able to transact uh, credit card, debit card payments and stuff like that. So eBay takes a percentage plus like whatever, 50, 60 cents per transaction. It's pretty expensive. However, for a nonprofit, a 501c3, which is what uh, Melanoid uh, Nation is, a 501c3, um, they get a discount. So the discount is somewhere around 28, 29% and about 49 cents a transaction. I suck at math, but I did, I do have a gorilla math level. And if eBay is, is going to file, they got to file this with the government. If they're filing fees that they gained of 17000 or that he paid, I should say, of $17,917.71, that is 2.8% of what? Plus, we're not even going to include the $0.49. Cents. Let's just focus on the percentage of each transaction. It's over $600,000. It's over $600,000 that PayPal has transacted for him alone. So that's not his money from YouTube, his AdSense. That's not Cash App. That's not all these other you know, avenues, these vehicles to put money in his pocket, just from PayPal alone, they're ta- you're talking over $600,000. So they can't hide that. And, and there's no way around that. So if the total was 767475 over 600000 of that, came through PayPal. So you mean to tell me between Vimeo or whatever other payment routes he has besides cash? I mean, I've seen 10, eight, I don't know how many. Listen, I have so much information in front of me right now that I, it's, it's actually, it's scary. Actually, I'm not going to lie to you. It's scary because at this point doing what he's done I really truthfully am starting to believe like somebody did scream out when he was here that he's an agent. I've always said he was an agent. I've always said Umar Johnson was an agent. And I've always said it's potentially true that Tommy Sotomayor is an agent. Because again, even if they're not knowingly an agent, they are handlers or the people that are funding them to do what they do could be agents. You see what I mean? So you could actually be an involuntary agent. You don't even know you're controlled. You you don't even know you're controlled by maybe Mossad or Zionist or communist or CIA. You don't even know. All you know is this one dude who go by Ray Ray, man, every month, Ray Ray, he put $2,800 in my PayPal or in my cash app or whatever. Hey, brother, keep doing what you're doing. Hey, bro, did you see this? Did did you see this article here? Bro, you should talk about this. And then they do because they feel obligated. They got this money. Now they got to bring it up. Do you know how many times Tariq Nasheed has done that? There's 50 million black people in America. How many of them are elevated to this level? I want you to think about that. I can't wait for the next video. I didn't even touch anything that I really meant to touch. In, in the, You know what? Let's watch this at least, and then we'll wrap it up. I want to make three quick points about reparations and then let our other brothers and sisters speak. First thing we have to understand, we have to focus and keep the emphasis on it being lineage-based. The problem is we see a lot of trick bag language being... So, 
let, let, let me just give you my, per- I cannot, you see, this is what happened when I tried to listen to Tommy Sotomayor years ago. I literally feel like there's demons gnawing at my, right above my stomach, inside of my chest. I cannot fucking stand this dude. The sound of his voice and his cool little quips. And now let me tell y'all about trick bag, trick bag economic. Like it's always this dumb fucking quippy bullshit that, that people gravitate, the dumb dumbs gravitate to. I can't listen to this shit. I'm just, just in those 26 seconds. Let me tell you what I heard and what, what I think has happened here. Do you understand what he's saying about lineage? On it being lineage based. The problem is so right there, every single black person in that audience probably wanted to shut his mic off. Do you know why? Because the vast majority of people do not want it to be lineage based. Do you understand that? Because and I wouldn't if I was black, I would absolutely be terrified if it's 2023 and I'm a black guy and there's always uh, talk in the air about reparations, which again, I, I should get into it, but I, I didn't want to make this long. I didn't want to make this long. I'm going to do a, a very quick video about Malcolm X because I read one of his speeches earlier tonight and we're actually, a, we're reliving history and I'm going to prove that to you. What's going on right now is no different than what was going on exactly 60 years ago. There's a few things that are different, but we're in 60 years. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to show you the speech. We're going to go through a few things. Not not in this video. It's going to be the very next one. Cuz it's only going to be like 5 or 10 minutes. In 60 years nothing's changed. V- virtually nothing. Hardly anything. Your jaw is going to drop when we go over this Malcolm X speech. And Malcolm X warned of motherfuckers like Tariq Nasheed. So, and I know a lot of smart black people have figured this out too. I know that. But I'm going to tell you what I hear him saying right here. Because if I was black, I would, I'd be terrified of any type of DNA or lineage authentication for reparations. Because if you're going to hold a $5 million check and and just fan it in front of my face and with, with the, uh, you know, the, the other um, possibilities of getting paid $97,000 a year for the next 250 years, all my debt wiped clear, uh, houses for a dollar, whatever else, you're going to wave that in front of my face. I'm black. I want my reparations. So I no, I don't want any DNA done. I don't want any lineage uh, investigation done. I want my reparations. You know what I mean? Like, so all these black people in the audience are like, shut the fuck up, dude. Who, whose best interest would it be in if they would have a black guy get in front of other hundreds and th- really tens of thousands of uh, maybe a hundred thousand black people by the time this runs its course on the internet, you know, Tariq Nasheed's been pushed up of the 50 million. So now, Hey, you know, you have to say this cause this is what's going to go viral. This, uh, now I'm telling y'all this has to be done through lineage, lineage, lineage. What does that mean? Focus and keep the emphasis on it being lineage-based. Only the government would benefit from that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's in the government's best interest that that reparation check would be strictly based in lineage. Some trick bag, uh, you know, (laughs) some trick bag, whatever the Fs, you know, may may try to confuse you, but I'm black, so I got your best interest. Lineage, lineage. Yeah, lineage. Okay, 
So you know the number that Malcolm X gave for the uh, people, the amount of people owed reparations? Do you know that number? We're going to go over it in the next video. It's 20 million. 20 million ex-slaves. And, and they're, you know, their uh, they're immediate family. 20 million. Not 50 million, 50 plus million. So that means less than half of every black person in this country would be eligible for any type of reparation payment. Which I personally believe if it would come, it should come from the uh, coffee industry, the tobacco industry, um, you know, stuff like that. Where the, the corporations and, and the uh, the industries that, that really profited from from the use of uh, slave labor. So, again, there it is. But I also have an idea. I might be turning around here on reparations. Because we can make a deal based on this Malcolm X uh, speech. At least I, I'll sign off on, you know, if there's ever anything I could agree to, I'll say, yeah. But here are the conditions. These are these are the conditions. Everything else goes away. Everything else goes away. There's no more Section 8. There's no more access. There's no more HUD. There's no more SSI. There's no more cash assistance. There's no more WIC. There's no nothing. You get reparations, all other obligations, including affirmative action, go bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay, let's make that deal. And if you want to get crazy, again, I'll get into this in the next video. We can do what Malcolm X wanted to do. Whoever wants to do it. Take California. It's yours. From the mountains to the ocean, have at it. Have at it. Secede from the United States and have the, you know, the black promised land that Malcolm X preached about constantly. Black owned, black ran, black schools, black this, black industry, black government, black, 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 black. Take it, do it, great. And who wants to go, 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 go? Do you, I, I mean, that, just stopping the, uh, the, the single mothers with the fatherless kids, the 12 or 15 fatherless kids, each one of them get SSI checks, that alone would pay for probably 500 people's reparation checks over the extended amount of time that the government is paying or that I'm paying somebody's SSI check. We could make that happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. But we're going to talk about that in the next video. But again, only the government would benefit from it being lineage-based. So somebody yelling out and calling Tariq Nasheed an agent and he got shook. Hmm, makes you think, doesn't it? Makes me think. I'm Covert Radio. Again, this is fearlessly unapologetic talk radio. You guys take care. Have a good day. There's a war out there, old friend. A world war. And it's not about who's got the most bullets. It's about who controls the information. What we see and the EF, how we work, what we think. It's all about the information. You want a war? You got a war. And there's no looking back. There's no forgetting. And there's no forgiving. See it all clearly now. The more we build, the more haters try to tear it down. The more we build. Now you listen to me. All of you. You hoodlums don't own these streets.